we're going to we're going to be recording these for posterity and for uh, people who couldn't make it. Um, yeah, post it out there. And also we have a mailing list. If you send an email to this address down here, uh, it will send out to the entire membership. Um, except for people who have opted out of uh, emails from from uh, the meetup uh, uh, .com site. Um, I want to kind of make some room at every meeting for if anyone is working somewhere that's looking for security professionals uh, or for anyone who's on the call who is looking for an opportunity, uh, kind of give you a space here to, to, to voice that. And uh, we can certainly use the, uh, uh, the mailing list to send these out to or the meetup discussion group. Um, so if anybody has any opportunities open for, for security people, uh, now would be a good time to bring them up. All right, I'm taking uh, silence as nothing going on right now, but that's okay. Um, if, uh, if you do have any openings or looking, uh, like I said, just use the meetup mailing list uh, or send me a note and I could post it. All right. And of course, again, we're always looking for people to give a talk about some interesting topic, uh, hopefully related to security or tech in general. Yes. And you can send that to me uh, at that email address right there. Sorry, uh, are other people seeing this little weird icon thing? Yeah, I was to figure out that was on my screen or yours. <laughs> no, that's that's mine. I think that's I don't Whoops. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Parabox, there we go. I think maybe that's what the problem was. There we go. Okay, that's better. <laughs> so Nathan.Larson at OWASP.org. And uh, we'll get you set up. Uh, I like to tell people that OWASP, as many of you know, uh, the local OWASP group is a nice... Uh, laid back place to uh, give a security related talk or to try out a talk that you're thinking about giving at a, at a larger conference. Um, I, whenever I talk to uh, students, you know, university students or, uh, or heck, uh, even if we, if we ever talk to high school students about security, um, I, I tell them that this group is a nice low key laid back bunch uh, to uh, give a presentation to. So they can get over their initial stage fright about giving talks and hopefully launch their uh, launch their speaking careers. All right, and now without further ado, we have Sudhir Karanam. I uh, hope you got, I got your name right. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking about privileged identity and access management, and Sudhir has. Uh, 19, more than 19 years in IT and more than a dozen years in InfoSec. He's uh, done a lot of things, uh, a lot of things related to uh, access management, and, as you can see there. And uh, you've got a CEH and, uh, and a CISBAC, so that's cool. Um, I, I think that's all I, all I could glean out of your bio, uh, so please uh, add to that if, if you'd like if I'm missing anything. And uh, I will, let's see, I'm gonna stop sharing here and try to, I think I have to make you a presenter, sit here. So give me a second. <laughs> um, first of all, stop my sharing. And There you go, let's see if this works. Yeah. Okay, you're able to share your screen now? Mm hmm Okay. Can you my screen? Go here. Are you able to see my presentation? Yeah, we got it. Cool. Yeah. Hey, uh, before I get started, uh, Nathan, in, in the agenda, I think I 
you, there was a mention about meet and greet. What I want to basically want to get a feel of is uh, the audience, what what they are really looking in terms of their prior knowledge. Or I'm just like going with an assumption that we will start with owner one, the privileged access management owner one. And as we cover the topics, we can go in depth or maybe take it to the uh, maybe a follow up session. Does that sound like a plan? That sounds great. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is, uh, you know, you, you uh, have the floor. So, um, you know, do whatever uh, kind of <laughs> intros you, you'd like to do here. Sure. Okay. Thank you. And hello, all. I'm Sudhir Karanam. Thanks for having me today. And uh, good morning, good evening, or <laughs> good afternoon, depending upon where you are coming from. So let's get started with uh, a very niche, I would say, in terms of its implementation, though the concept has been for a quite long time, but, but the, its implementation and the spread across the industry, and there is a lot more need to be done here. So let's get started. The area which we are going to speak about is referred to as privileged access management. Okay. Now, before we get deeper into the topic, about me, I think Nathan covered most of it. So for now, we'll just uh, skip this piece. If you have any questions or anything uh, more, probably we will have through our social media contacts or uh, we'll, we'll get to know from a, a different channel. I, I just want to make sure this time is dedicated to our knowledge share. So let me move on to the next state, uh, task. So what are we going to cover today? So we are going to speak about and again, just before I continue with this, man, I'll be probably in a flow. And please interrupt me whenever you feel like. And any question you have, please let me know. We can stop there and speak about it and then move on. Okay. And we do have a small slide or a time allocated for a Q&A at the end. So either ways is fine with me. Just uh, giving you a heads up on that. So what we are going to cover today, we'll speak about privileged access management the what, why, and the key benefits. The next thing is what exactly does it cover, right? When we speak about the definitions and all those things, but from a layman perspective, what is that the P, uh, PAM is exactly delivering to you? Next, we'll go at different solutions we have in PAM, then the PAM implementation guidelines, or uh, what do you say, when the prerequisites, the things you need to keep in mind when you're designing your PAM solution, so on. And then we will speak about the key market players today. And in the end, we'll dedicate it to QA. So that is going to be our agenda. Let me go on to our first piece of information which we want to learn today. What is privileged access management? Before we go to privileged access management, it's again a bit of a, too many jargons here. So let's split that into multiple pieces. What is a privileged action? So let's let's go a step back here, man. A normal user, what's what's the role of a normal user? He would he or she would be coming to your application, accessing some information, referring to some information, and maybe update, delete, but his actions are pretty much concerned with his account. Okay. But there are certain actions which determine the overall health of the system, be it the modifying of a system, the CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete on users who are accessing your system, or there could be some system related accounts, some of the administrative activities like uh, changing the, 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 sorry, the deployments or modifying your system. And, you name it, any of these administrative activities or things which change the state of the system as a whole, where you have a direct impact for your business or the organization in its working or how it is presented to your consumers. Okay, so the privileged actions are those set of actions which are of a higher criticality and beyond of what a normal user can do. These need special 
permissions and special rights associated with these actions. Now let's look at privileged accounts. We spoke about privileged actions still now. Now privileged accounts, it's just a thing which we are gonna build on this now. What is a privileged account? A privileged account will be an interface or an identity which is gonna grant permissions to perform a privileged action. Okay, so this can be anything, right? And there can be human users, system users, and, and these can operate on the applications, different infrastructures, the files, data, you name it. So anything which manipulates beyond what an ordinary user can do, the data, the infrastructure part of it, that's your privileged account. Examples, your root users, your admin accounts, emergency accounts, and service accounts, so on. And just a one FI, emergency, I think you would have come across root accounts, admin accounts, system accounts, but emergency accounts is something new, man. Emergency accounts are those accounts which are very, very temporary in nature, but these are typically used or created during an emergency. Man, imagine you have some kind of a disaster recovery. So you would, there are organizations which would have to go with some identities which would have a full blown permissions, man, kind of do all kind of a permissions. So they are very risky, but they are required at that period of time, right? So that's where emergency accounts. So these are uh, some of those critical accounts which deal with privileged access management, okay? Now, let's look at our core uh, topic here. What is PAM? PAM is a set of strategy or a policies which are used to safeguard your privileged accounts, thereby monitor, detect any malicious activities which are happening, steal, secure, destroy data, uh, steal, destroy data files on your IT infrastructure. It's basically a set of strategies which are which help in ensuring business continuity in the event of uh, any, I mean, basically it's a preventive control which would help you ensure business continuity even in the case of any malicious activity happening and specifically on these privileged accounts. Any questions? Till now, man. We are touching on the core of PAM here. So before we move on, I just want to make sure we are on the same page with respect to what this topic is about, what is this area of study is about, and we'll go and build on this. Any questions? And if anyone has questions during the talk, you can also enter them in the chat window and I can interrupt for you if, uh, if you don't want to interrupt yourself. Okay, uh, I think Nathan, I'll continue. Just let me know if, if you feel there is any query. Okay, thank you. Okay, why is PAM required? Uh, with our previous slide, we just looked at what PAM is and why PAM probably is something very, very obvious question, but just there are a couple of points to uh, make it more uh, heavy in a sense that to say yes, right? So what are our threats? The biggest threats for any security are employees, right? They are the weakest link in your cybersecurity. It's, it's very, very hard to keep everyone on board and ensure they perform in the stipulated, within the stipulated guidelines, follow the best practices and be on the vigil every time. It's it's hard, man. It's 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 an inherent weakness, which we have to deal with. So employees are going to be and probably still continue continue to be weakest link. Now, imagine. So dear, real, real quick, this. sorry to interrupt. Uh, are are there slides where uh, you're you're going through? I'm I'm sharing the slide. I don't okay, know we're still see. seeing the title page uh, for privileged access management. Uh, there we go. go. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I see what's going on. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So 
According, according to Verizon, and I think the 61% of the data leaks involved privileged credentials. And there is another IBM report which speaks about uh, average cost of a data leak with respect to privileged uh, account as, ex as against a normal account. So it's pretty obvious when imagine someone getting admin credentials, he can just run havoc on your systems. Okay. So now let me look at some of the key benefits, what we are trying to address. Maybe I'll just, okay. Uh, can I, okay, this, is, this should be better, right? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so yeah, I think, but we'll miss on some of this <laughs> animation, but please bear with me. So uh, here, are the what are the key benefits? This is something which I look at as a great contribution to, to the organization by having a PAM, okay? Though, though some of them are not very obvious, look at this way, malware. Malware's protection or malware protection in, in this uh, key benefit, what, what, what are we trying to achieve here? Now, this is something which comes out as a secondary result, though we are not intending this. So what we wanted to look at here is we wanna control access to privileged accounts and monitor those actions. But the side effect here is malware protection. And how is this happening? My malware usually require or operate at a higher privilege layer of the system. Now, because you have a PAM solution implemented, it gets hard for any malware activity in your, in your organization or in your infrastructure because of the preventive measures we have with PAM, okay? And, and we'll, we'll go in details what exactly PAM is doing to ensure or detect this kind of stuff, uh, but, but looks like malware protection would be a big, big or a great deal of benefit for an organization because these things going out of your hands can result in company closures itself, right? So that's one. Second biggest benefit I see here is compliance. Because these products, PAM products, PAM solutions come up with some of the, or, or stay compliant with the industry regulations like SOC, SIPA, NIST, and, and some of these data protection laws. So you have, not only you're saving your organization from malicious actors or even the genuine users dealing with, uh, what do you say? sorry, uh, genuine, genuine users performing an accidental activity. So these, this is where your compliance and your malware protection and even the improved operational efficiency, let's speak about that. So now, what are we getting here, man? What do we mean by improved operational efficiency? There is the principle of least privilege, right? So uh, let me just take a moment here, man. Principle of least privilege basically deals with giving permissions to the concerned par party as minimum as required, okay? So someone, let's say, take an example, a user wants to have a read access for your resource or a file, he will be provided only with the read access and nothing more. And now take an example of uh, admin. Admin, let's say, take an, uh, this admin, let's say this admin is in for a active directory this person would have access to admin right or admin activities only on Active Directory, not on your PeopleSoft or, or not on your uh, SAP or any other different account. So that's where operational efficiency comes in with the minimal set of changes or config, you will be, have a, you'll be able to maintain a much, much rigorous security, which is least, which is of least friction. Moving on. Okay. Okay, how does PAM or what does PAM do? So we kind of touched on this, centrally manage access. So we'll, we'll just go one, and the things which I've highlighted will go a bit deep onto that. What do you mean by centrally managed access? And, and it, 
great help in preventing insecure passwords stores and shifts exactly so what happens now imagine a scenario i think probably this would be a very very a common scenario which happens in almost every organization wherein you have multiple accounts for per user one the other problem and every organization is facing is you have a couple of ids which are shared across users meaning let's take an example of admin a group of people would just go on sharing this id so everyone knows access and now you have no way to pinpoint who did what using this id so now now just this kind of gets compounded when we are dealing with uh, privileged accounts so now imagine an admin account being shared across multiple people and it can be a real real uh, very devastating so that's centrally managing access so now what happens with pam is you are there are different pam solutions they deal with different way of achieving this we'll just touch upon that and then go in detail on that so centrally managed so you have a way now wherein you do not have you are not providing users with either the ids or the passwords forget about sharing and then it's not going to happen now so the even there are a, a concept called ephemeral ids or ephemeral, ephemeral credentials wherein these credentials are going to be sh short lived and they will be generated on demand and provided to the requester we will touch that in in bit more detail with additional information on that so this spam helps you in centrally managing your identities your credentials across the organization and now you have a better insight of what account is used to do what action and by whom okay now let's go to principle of least privilege i think we spoke about that i'll just skip that now let's look at authorized and unauthorized activities okay this is very interesting so we spoke about malware protect malware protection right so let's say there is there has been a malware which has been injected into our infrastructure and it is kind of slowly creeping into our system and uh, going through different layers so this is where the pam solutions come into picture so the moment there is a privileged action performed or requested you are your pam solutions are going to monitor it which are doing in constant uh, 24 by 7 now 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 it's on real time so it can result in alerting the concerned authorities to ensure that there is something wrong happening take a look if this is as per the flow or is it expected or something new we are seeing and and that's where you are authorized and okay let's that's where the unauthorized activities are tracked now let's take a look at authorized transactions right when when the you, let's say an admin is performing actions what is expected to do but what if he does something extra or something malicious or something unintended so this is where you are tracking each and every activity on your system and particularly pertaining to privileged users okay now the last la uh, uh, last in this bullet list is like maximizing security with reduced complexity and increased visibility so what is happening let's let's just get bit deeper in this so maximize security so how are we maximizing security here man? so we are being compliant with the regulations we are getting compliance with respect to our uh, the all the data protection laws the security part of it the privacy part of it and even uh, privacy in more in terms of the data being lost or stolen okay not with the <laughs> employee who's operating but it's the uh, consumer data which i mean okay so now uh, security perspective you know your very very high risk transactions are continuously monitored and you have and how are we doing this with a reduced complexity the user doesn't have to do much in terms of uh, there is a very very reduced friction from a user perspective in performing these activities look consider an example wherein the admin has to remember 
multiple admin IDs and multiple passwords for it. And imagine the strain he would have to go through if everyone, every of these application forced you to go through MFA, right? So that's, that's the uh, user behavioral and, and, and the frictionless experience we are going to have from PAM. Now, increased visibility. Okay. Uh, this is another a great feature with PAM. So what happens, I'll, I'll carve that in probably, yes, we'll, we'll carve that in, maybe we'll just extend that. So when it's a increased visibility, increased visibility, meaning the actions performed by your privileged users will get recorded, not only monitored, they can be recorded in real time and can be used for further study in terms of your analytics or in terms of looking at malicious behaviors or any uh, out of uh, the standard path or the expected path to be taken. Any questions till now? Okay, now uh, I think Gartner is pretty plain and honest about this. These things are not something you can manage without any specialized tools because of this, all the complexities involved. So that's probably pretty obvious. I just wanted to make sure uh, this just stands out saying that this is not a human activity. This is going to be an automated task with specific and specialized tools. Okay, okay. Mm, let's look at PAM solutions. So there are, there are two ways in which PAM is implemented. I would say one complements the other, or maybe they're both, both can be used in tandem. Okay. So what's happening with privileged account and session management? So the flow would be something very much uh, this way. The user, let's say the admin user comes in, he wants to perform an op operation. He would request the PAM solution to get him an ID and a password. So what PAM does goes ahead and gets the PAM uh, user ID password for a particular uh, task or a particular activity. Now what the session which gets generated with these credentials gets recorded, okay? So when there is a recording happening when it gets stored, so the user, whatever he has requested for on the activities will be or are expected to be limited only to those what he has requested for, be it his uh, rights, the access rights or permissions, the task which he's working on. That's how uh, we have a complete control and visibility on the user activity, okay? So there are, there are a couple of uh, uh, great features which we spoke about, real-time monitoring, the access control with shared, ac shared accounts with MFA. And again, look at this, we can still have shared accounts but the credentials are gonna change every time they make a request for. So they, that's, that's where the, what do you say? The changes or, or the sharing of credentials is still prevented, but the accounts can be used, but it's not going to be a persistent set of accounts. Remote sessions, yes, and then you have session recording. Okay. Secrets management, PAM solutions and secret managements are I would say very, very close to each other. And there are products which do deliver or inbuilt secret management solutions in them. So what are secrets, right? Man, probably a step, man, uh, 101 here, man. Secrets can be anything like password, your SSH keys, API keys, OAuth tokens. Sometimes you have your SSL certificates, uh, used for your SFTP and any of these protocol, the certs, the private keys, so on, okay? Now, that's your secret as a, at a very high level, but side view. Now there is something new which has come out, like uh, we spoke about static accounts versus dynamic accounts. See, some of the secret management solutions offer it, but, but it's still at a very, very niche stage, I would say. So what happens is when you would, the secret management tools are capable of interacting with their target system. Let's take an example of Active Directory or maybe an Oracle database. Okay, a when, a when Active Directory or Oracle database is integrated 
with a secret management solution or a PAM solution, the capability of secret management in this particular use case is like they can create and destroy user accounts at will. And these accounts, when we say it's it, they are going to be very short laid for a particular purpose, whatever the role, the rights of that, it's all going to be very, very limited and the life is going to be pretty much what is configured or what the owner of the system needs. So this is, this is kind of moving uh, or extending the standing privileges versus zero standing privileges. We'll, we'll come to that when we speak about the next section. So what we spoke about now is privileged account and session management where the account is created and grant with the privileges and handed over to the requester. What is this? There is a second way of achieving PAM, which is more of privileged, privilege elevation and delegation management. What happens here? So here, this deals with, uh, let's take an example of a temporary admin. Right? A temporary admin is still an admin which will have all the, all the permissions granted in this particular uh, PASM solutions, right? So admin, he may not, a temporary admin may not need all the, all the deed, all the access rights, or he is not gonna perform all the operations which the PASM is granting you. That's where PDM comes in, wherein the user's account, there is no new account being created here, but the user account itself is granted additional roles rather than creating a new you, new ID and granting him the access. Uh, I, I'm clear on the difference here, man. One is creating new set of accounts. The other is just elevating your account with the necessary privileges. And then this is this kind of falls into, uh, uh, as at this stage, man, it's kind of an advanced uh, PAM solution. Not many solutions offer this. So you have something like, just-in-time access, which is also called as ZSP, zero standing privileges. So wherein these privileges are very, very momentary and gra only granted when it is requested and then taken out as soon as the session is expired. So what is the biggest benefit, right? Here, the biggest benefit here is if there is any malicious actor coming in, he has no account to go after. Are you getting it? So there is no account which has all the credentials or the access rights, which can be exploited in, in PEDM. Am I making sense? Is it, is it, is it getting clear? I mean, the benefits of PAM solutions, any questions, any feedback? Sounds good. Awesome. Let's move on. Okay, so we spoke about the PAM solutions. We'll just speak about the additional, some of the advanced concepts. We touched on zero standing privileges, ephemeral identities and credentials. Okay, ephemeral identities and credentials. I'll just probably touch upon this, right? We spoke about very short lived identities and credentials. Now the biggest benefit, what are we getting out of here is you don't have to maintain any password vaults or password rotations, all you need to care about is your application makes a request for an identity, you get an identity, you are done with your operation and you are done with your credentials identity as well. Okay, so now this concept may or may not work in all the use cases, but particularly very, very helpful put in, in terms of admin activities more of a H2M transactions when human to machine transactions, not exactly on M2M transactions. Okay. Privileged task, task automation. What is it? So privileged, let's say you have an admin who has a very, very repetitive set of tasks he's going through. He has to perform it on a regular basis. Maybe take an example of patch installs, right? So these things are very regular and has to happen and these cannot be done by any normal user. So that's where privileged task automation comes in or robotic process automation, wherein you will be able to set a workflow, link it with your PAM and 
all your identities and credentials are going to be managed by PAM based on what is required. Yeah, the entire flow, the workflow gets executed with your privileged accounts and, and they can be wiped out once your task is done. Okay. The last thing, which, which is again, another advanced uh, topic, which is like, now you have all the recordings, all the data, the logs of the activities being taken up. Okay. So now analytics, man, it's a hot uh, cake now, man. It's like, so you are going, you have a hell amount of data available with you. You will be, there are multiple ways this information can be used. One, check if there was any breach by looking at the logs. May not, be, maybe from human users or from malicious external parties, you name it. So you will be able to analyze the behavior and look at the abnormalities there and, and then see if there is any, and maybe even look at the predicting the uh, uh, attack next, right? So that's where uh, advanced analytics, it's again a topic of interest right now, more into more in the academic circles. I haven't seen a product which is doing it to the extent we would want into, so that it can be implemented in the industry, but, but has a lot of promise in it. Okay. Let's go on. Okay. Ah, yeah. What is PAM implementation, right? So based on what we spoke about till now, I think it's, it's probably getting clear. There are three main players here. Okay. One people, second tools, third process. So unless people and processes are also being or getting the required attention, we like invest in your process optimization or training people, unless they are being taken care, having tool is not gonna help. Okay. Now let's look at the prerequisites, right? So if, if we decide that we wanna go ahead with PAM implementation, what is that there is a lot of manual activity, I would say, and particularly in, in when we are dealing with legacy systems or, or like say a big industry, which is like 50 years old, 100 years old before this cloud uh, picked up the heat. There are a lot of and heterogeneous set of systems. Right? So biggest work where you would have to spend time and effort will be on getting the inventory right. Maybe start small, but we need to have the, all the list of accounts, the credentials, the systems, the, what do you say, the operations, all the flows involved, the human to mission or mission to mission, B2B, B2C, you name it. First thing is getting a proper inventory, okay? Now, once you have the inventory, we will go ahead with a small, one step at a time, maybe get the session activity, recording, tracking, detect, for detecting any abusers, session recordings, integrate with secret management tools. And even more critical will be when you are implementing your PAM, it's like this is going to be a extremely critical infrastructure. Guess what, man, man, we will have all kind of credentials, all passwords under one system, entire organization, uh, I would say the business, uh, the business survivability is on this, right? So it has to be very, very critical in terms of recovery or the high availability when when the design when the solution is being designed. Keep these factors in mind, and this is something which can which should never go down. Okay. Now the other extension to PAM is like a robotic process automation. We, we spoke about it. That's, that's more to do with when we deal with privileged task automations, cloud infrastructure entitlement management. Interesting. So there are, there are two pieces here. One is cloud, sorry, PAM in cloud and PAM for cloud. Uh, I think I have not uh, mentioned about it. Yeah, PAM in cloud, meaning what is your PAM solution is gonna reside on cloud. 
okay so it deals with all uh, the applications your uh, infrastructure everything and pam itself is going to be on your cloud it's more uh, like pam as a service right pam in cloud pam for cloud is where your heterogeneous systems where in let's say you have a, you are in a hybrid system so how do you integrate your pam solution between a legacy and a the ones which is in cloud so these are two different areas of study i don't want to go in detail or uh, as as of today just let me know if you are interested probably we can uh, speak about those okay now let me go to i think we are at the fag and yeah some of the key players visualox this uh, uh, this tool or a solution is having a really good recording capabilities okay and beyond trust is a market leader and again these are uh, maybe as of today i have i have mentioned some of the uh, sorry i step back uh, the, these systems as we know keeps changing but some of the leading players are these guys and again the the implementation or your choice probably is going to depend upon the objectives or the needs of that organization okay. so let's go to the end of it any questions guys nothing for me Awesome. Uh, sure. uh, Nathan, I'm done with the presentation. I have this, uh, the material which I was referring when coming up with this presentation. I can share it as, if you require. Thanks. Otherwise, we can close this. Uh, yeah, I, I, I actually did have a question. I wanted to wait. I, I always like to wait until other people have a chance. Um, what do you see as uh, the future of the uh, uh, um, um, access management in general uh, is this are we going to continue to get more um, optimized in this respect uh, you know, with with the tools uh, you know continuously getting better or um, do you see uh, I, I guess are we there already Frankly, probably I would say no. We are not there yet. I mean, there is always a catching to do, right? I mean, it's it's the <laughs> it's the police and the thief game, right? I mean, the, as long as you have malicious actors who are who, who I would say always one step ahead because they are trying they they have exploited, right? So we have a lot of catching to do. So things there are a lot of things which needs to be improved. The efficiency, the what do you say, the speed at which we would be able to implement a solution or block or stop a malicious activity. I think that there is a lot of work needs to be done. And even with organization, even with the, some of this Fortune 100 organization, uh, even those organizations which have highest uh, budget to these aspects, I think they too are lagging and gets exploited. And, we are we are under we are under constant attack, so we cannot let our guard down. Yep, I think <laughs> I agree. I think that's common across the board. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. all right. Does anybody have else have any questions? Okay, I guess uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for uh, for for this uh, presentation. Um, okay, you, uh, yeah. Please uh, please send your slides to us, and we can post those as well. Um, let's see. I, I also want to say uh, yeah, th thank you for your presentation, and also uh, thanks to uh, Kieran Sharma, who was a uh, um, been helping out, uh, helping line up uh, uh, speakers for, for our local group. Um, been uh, doing a great job with that, uh, and uh, hope to uh, hope to keep increasing the number of uh, number of interesting talks we have here. Um, I think we're we're 
I, I think we're almost to the point of nailing down our next talk in three weeks. Uh, it looks like October 11th, and I'll be sending out that invite to everybody uh, as soon as as soon as I get the confirmation. Um, so, um, okay, if there's nothing else, um, thank you all for joining. Thank you, Sadir, for, for uh, presenting, and uh, you. we'll talk to you all later. All right, bye. Thank you. All. All right, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Yeah.